Auburn suffers one of their worst defeats in a long time at the hands of the New Mexico State Aggies. Let's talk about it on this edition of the Up Tempo Podcast. You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, Auburn family? I'm your host, Dustin Smith, joined as always by my guy, Blake Lane. And it is a dark Sunday, dark, dark Sunday here. Uh, we're going to try to make sense of this, uh, this loss, Blake. Auburn Falls to New Mexico State, 31-10. to 10. And uh, I was at the game, man, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm still a little shell-shocked. I've, I've been home for about 10 minutes. Uh, what were your thoughts, man, sitting on the couch? Tell me, tell me what you saw. Man, it's hard to put this one into words, Dustin. Um, if you want me to be completely honest, uh, I'll start with let's, Tiger let's, Walker. Let's, let's speak truth. Let's speak truth today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want me to be completely honest, let's start with Tiger Walt. Start with Tiger Walt. Um, I watched a New Mexico State player walk you down into your end zone while you were heading into your locker room into your trap as you like to play after act, after victories on the road, all right? And you let him sit there and talk to you recklessly, throw his hands up at you, and he was telling you what New Mexico State was about to do to you. And not one person checked him. Not one. Not one person checked him. You don't have to run over there and do it, you, but you at least, hey, dog, you ain't going to talk to us like that on our field, all right? Not one person checked him. It, it, it just looked like no effort, no effort. And, and, and it's not from just the kids, all right? It's just not from the players. Let's talk about – you were there, Dustin. Let's talk about the fan base. All right. Yeah, I'd love to talk about what I saw yesterday. Myself included. All right. We didn't show up. We didn't show up. The stadium was empty. There was no life in Jordan Hare. None. There wasn't. And, maybe and, my and, maybe my two hundredth game there, Blake. The deadest I've ever seen it. Yeah. And I I talked to I talked to a lot of folks and you know, I think we got comfortable. I think we got cocky. I think we caught a winning streak and we beat three really bad SEC teams and we got comfortable and we, you know, including myself. Hey, I got on here the other night, Dustin Hall, man, there's no way we lose to New Mexico State. I mean, come on, dog. They lost to UMass. They come in with a game plan. Their coach has our coach's number. All right. Um, and they executed that game plan. And we got caught sleeping. We got caught sleepwalking. And by the time we woke up and realized, hey, we're going to lose this game, it was too late. It was too late. We got pushed around on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Our DBs, the one place where I said, hey, you know what? We're going to create a turnover, maybe two. Um, we give up two PIs on the first drive that leads to seven points for them yeah. on third down on third down. And it's a lack of execution. Uh, it was a lack of being ready. This loss goes on everybody. All right. It doesn't go on just Peyton Thorne. All right. It also goes on this coaching staff, Philip Montgomery and Hugh, you got to answer why Jarquez Hunter only touched the ball eight times. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was a blunder yesterday. It sucks today. It doesn't feel good. It is embarrassing. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. It hurts. But I, I keep trying to tell myself we're going to be okay. All right. I keep trying to tell myself we're going to be okay because I, I, I watch other programs and I say, Hey, you know, they were once in this spot too. 
Florida State, all right? Florida State. You, they lost to Jacksonville State, FCS, all right? They, they let FCS, Jacksonville State, walk into Florida State, throw a Hail Mary on them, and beat them. And all of Florida State's fans were, Mike Norvell, he needs to be fired. He needs to be fired. Well, I don't know why we ever hired him. Well, a couple years later, they're 11-0. Prayers for Jordan Travis. I uh, hate to see that last night. Terrible injury. But they're staring at a playoff spot, all right? They're probably not going to get in due to his injury. Uh, but they're still there, man. They're 11-0. LSU, 2017, they lose to Troy in Baton Rouge. 2019, they hoist the trophy, national champions, all right? I, I try to look at the positive side of it. But yesterday, watching Diego Pavia or hmm. Pavia or however you say his name, come in and you let him walk around your trap as you call it, like Johnny Manziel. You let him walk around, run around your house like Johnny Manziel yesterday. That's what it looked like, man. It looked like Johnny when he put up 63 on us. Uh, it, 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 it's – I don't – you let their running back, he dashed us, all right? They no. had one – what was it, number four? Uh, every time – Every time he hit a hole, Dustin, he would get up and he would immediately start talking, bro. He would immediately, uh, like they believed, they watched film, they had a game plan. They come in there thinking, hey, this isn't a $1.8 million payday. This is a dub. We're here to get a dub. <laughs> and we had Auburn fans saying, oh, Pavea is not even going to play. Uh, they're not, they're resting their starters because they got their conference championship game. Well, they come in there to play, Dustin, and they did it, and they won. And now we're sitting here wondering where we're headed. Uh, we thought we were headed for a lot of positivity, and we thought that we were headed for an Iron Bowl that would have a lot of heat around it, that we would be pumped up and ready to go, and yeah. all of that, dead. Yeah, dead. And uh, so that's one thing I said yesterday. I, I said I put on Twitter after the game. I said, man, what sucks is that – this really killed all the goodwill and the momentum that had been built up over the past month. And, and have you have to make this distinction a lot. That's talking about the team. I'm not talking about recruiting. I'm not saying that, okay. Oh, now we're out for cam Coleman sweepstakes. You know, I'm not saying nothing like that. Um, but as far as this team and the good, the faith that they had built up in that locker room and the juice that we had saw them have after Arkansas, boy, oh boy. And one, one thing I saw going around last night, uh, that I don't agree with at all is like this idea that this um, this is the wake up call for this team. This team's had wake up calls, man. If that if that Baton Rouge wasn't a wake up call, then I don't know what was. And I'm sorry, but if you go back and play our last episode, which looks completely ridiculous now, then you will. We talk about how. This team, in our mind, was very – they said all week, we, we know New Mexico State. We know. They they swore up and down they weren't looking ahead to Alabama. They swore up and down all week, coaching staff and players. They knew how serious of a challenge this was. So, let's say you didn't overlook them. You lost every stat. There's not there's nothing you pull up the box for from this game. There's nothing you won. We were so damn bad on third down defensively and offense. I mean, the third and 17 that they scored on, dude, yeah. you give up a third and 17. And and now on to your point about the crowd. What They were going towards the end zone where the student section was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. There was no student section yesterday. There wasn't. I got the pictures. If you want to argue with me, you can. They weren't there. And if you were going home for Thanksgiving, well, the students were going home for Thanksgiving, man. Cool beans, I guess. We took an L. And I'm not saying it's on, you know, this, but I'm just I'm just telling you. That was a golf crowd. I stood up the first third down our defense faced. I was one of maybe 10 people in the whole stadium standing up on that third down. And I got asked by people behind me to sit down. They couldn't see. I'll sit down. I'll shut up. Fine. Excuse me. I thought I was in Jordan Hare. My bad. Excuse me. I didn't know we weren't taking this game serious. None of us. Coaches, players, fans, I, I didn't know. Oh, we're just going to blow these boys out. 
Oh, okay. Okay, well, I'm just going to sit here and wait for the blowout then. I'm, and I'm just going to keep waiting. Man, I've watched Penn State blow us out in that stadium. I've, I've, I've watched Ole Miss beat us in there. I've seen it all. Nothing as embarrassing. Uh, no fight. Nothing. The sideline, not an ounce of juice. Not one time was a, was a player turn around and implore the crowd to get to stand. And they wouldn't have. I, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to like attack the fans here because I think I give the fans a lot of props all the time. I'm just telling you what was what it what it was yesterday in that stadium did not help the team. What we thought it was going to be going into Vanderbilt like a dead, just quiet. Is it, when when we talk about how it was going to be tricky at Vanderbilt because it was almost like just a neutral site. Auburn played a neutral site game yesterday. Just telling you the truth. Just telling you the facts. No one stood up and cheered on third down. On the couple of fourth downs, handfuls of people. It was just like that, man. So, um, and it was like that all day. Like the tailgating scene was, and I get what it was, but I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to let you know what the atmosphere from when I showed up. It was, let's just get this over with and get to Alabama. Yep. But New Mexico State didn't show up with that way. Um, the offensive line getting obliterated. Like just just getting completely demolished makes no sense to me. Before we start a recording, you talk about Pritchard getting body slammed and the true freshman Keldrick Falk being the only one to show any kind of fight, any kind of get back. Uh, you got a guy walk like you said, meeting you out the tunnel pregame. Nothing. You got nothing for that. It took me back to when UCF talked for a month before the Peach Ball that they were going to smack us, and they did. We got punked by a G5 team yesterday. What are they, Conference USA? That wouldn't even be making their conference title if the NCAA wasn't a bunch of bums. That's really Jacksonville State. So they're, they're the third best in their conference. The third best in the Conference USA. So, and, and I hear your point about Saban losing to ULM and all that, but they lost that game 21 to 14. Well, we got our ass whooped yesterday. That's a fact. Ass whooped. There's no part of the game that we won. And the part that really, really confused me was, was every third down stop, there's a flag. Every time that I, I think back to one where we escaped, uh, Thorne escapes on a third down, down by the goal line. He ends up throwing the ball to Jarquez. Jarquez ends up running around and getting a first down, right? And yep. then it, I think it was a uh, – Illegal man downfield or illegal it was some it was a illegal procedure, illegal man downfield, something along those lines was the penalty. Just shot ourselves in the foot again, couldn't get out of your own way. Uh I know I'm kind of rambling here, man. It's just trying you're trying to look at all of it and put it all together. It's just frustrating. Look, man, um one thing about the comparisons that we we try to make on somehow trying to bring positivity to what happened yesterday is I know Saban lost to Louisiana Monroe. I know Hugh Freeze is not Nick Saban. But the positivity that I try to find in that is Nick Saban had problems at Alabama, all right, that first year. He had some attitude problems. He had to, to uh, dismiss some folks. And they 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 lost, all right? They they went and played in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. I went. I watched them play Colorado, all right? Who went to a bowl game then, but they're not going to a bowl game this year. All right. Um, and and that's another thing I'm tired of seeing is I'm tired of seeing the Dion versus Hugh stuff. I'm sick of that, bro. Like it's a mute point. It's not I'm when I'm when I'm talking about that, I'm not talking about who's a better coach. I'm talking about stop talking about it because it's mute. <laughs> It's dead. Dog, like, Prime is right. at Colorado. Hugh is at Auburn. It's over with. There's no need to talk about it anymore. And they probably would have done similar jobs. And if you if role reversal, they probably would have done about the same, right? Yes. Like, we all knew Prime was going into a dumpster fire. And right. if you really thought that he was going to win six, seven, eight games, bro, you're fooling yourself. No, you don't. Understand. They they had as a sensational season. Okay. They, they, what they up, they won five games, four games, four, four or games? five after winning one. I mean, I thought I, I, I had them going like two and ten, three and nine. So they achieved what I thought they would exactly. Know. So, hey, great season to them, but cut it out, Auburn fans, cut it out. All right. When we look at 
when I, when I say and I look at the ULM and Alabama stuff, all right, guys still went to Alabama because they saw a vision, right, right. So when we get on Twitter and we're sitting there saying, well, Cam Coleman's not coming to Auburn now, guys, Julio Jones watched Alabama lose to Louisiana Monroe, and he he signed two months later to the University of Alabama. Because they saw a vision. Mark Ingram signed to the University of Alabama, won a Heisman Trophy for Alabama. All right. So just because we lost this game and it was embarrassing, we got to look at, at the big picture somehow and, and find a way to not let this spiral out of control, man. Now, if we come back next year and we play New Mexico and ULM, and we lose to one of them, then let's have a conversation. Then let's have a conversation. But I want to see Hugh work his full class, bring in guys that believe in what he is doing. Because I'll be honest with you, I was wrong about this team. I was wrong. I preached for three weeks about how this team, uh, they had senior leadership, they cared about what was going on in that locker room and on that field. And I I hate downing players, man. But what I saw yesterday, I was wrong about this team. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was <laughs> I think I, I think I tweeted out in the middle of the game. I said, boy, everything I said this week couldn't have been more off. So uh, I mean, I just I, that that part right there. I get what I mean. Uh, it's hard, Dustin. It's hard because we got beat in every phase of the game. Like we, I sat here and I said this team would be remembered, man. And and like even if they win seven games, they would be remembered. And now I just feel like you're going to be remembered for losing to New Mexico State, thirty-one to ten. Yeah, and here's the part. That so are two things I want to touch on. The first part about um the Saban ULM Norvell Jacksonville State. I'm playing devil's advocate on this. What I'm saying is maybe you're correct. Maybe it is those things. But maybe it's Jim McElwain losing to Georgia Southern. Could be now, and I'm not, and I'm not. And Hugh Freeze is a better coach than Jim McElwain, but. Hugh Freeze, like you said, also when Saban had made when Saban had lost, he already had a natty at LSU. He had already cleaned yeah. up a bad mess at LSU and won a natty. So we knew like Saban was that dude. Um, I was I'm impressed with what he was done in his career, but he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that thing where I can point to and say, okay, he's that. And then if I look back at last year. I'm just saying there's things that were like they were what eight and oh, eight and one. They kind of fell apart at the end, lost some games they shouldn't. Now, as Auburn fans, we wrote that off and said, Yeah, well, he was he, we we called. We called and we messed it up. And, and, and then he got sidetracked. Like I've said before, your resume starts week one, and now we're taking notes. So could this be nothing? Could this be R U L M? It could be. This also could be a sign of oh boy. So yeah. I think the thing that the the I'm getting attacked from both sides, which is why um, you will not see me on Twitter for a little bit because trying to make logic and reasoning on social media is just a pointless game. And quite frankly, I I, I don't have the mental my mental health cannot withstand the, the stupidity of like I'm just trying to just trying to have a conversation and have some discourse and people want to take you and, and, and make it and get personal and call you all kind of things outside your names and all this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna say this very, very loudly one time and I want everybody to understand me. And this is this is all the last I'm gonna speak on it. Um and if you don't understand this, then that college degree you have maybe doesn't mean quite what you think it does for some of these people. And this is not a uh, majority of y'all. I love y'all, man. But uh, some of this stuff is, 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 uh, listen to me. I don't have to 100% believe in nothing until it gets proven. And that, do and that doesn't mean that I 100% hate it or don't have faith in it. When it comes to Hugh Freeze, I think it's going to work. 
I think it's going to work out. I think he's going to be successful at Auburn. I have seen some things this year that I now have on my notepad and go, well, I'm wondering why the hell you rotated quarterbacks for six games. I'm wondering what the hell happened yesterday versus New Mexico State. Yeah. So all, so I'm just taking notes. So if we get down three years and with his tenure and things are going a certain kind of way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to year one and go, well, hey, you remember when this happened? You remember when we saw it? Like, that's the only point I'm making. For people to not be able to differentiate those two things, this idea that you're either on the Hugh Free side or you're off the Hugh Free side, I don't, I don't get that, man. I, I don't get that. We'll see. That's where I'm at. And uh, so the people that are watching this that are just attacking me from both sides, I mean, on, under the same under the same post on social media, I have people telling me that I want Hugh Freeze fired, and then I have people telling me that I'm holding water for Hugh Freeze, literally under the same post. So <laughs> – so, so you guys just aren't going to see me on there for a little bit, okay? Because I, I just I got to take a break. But so what we, we got to understand, and Blake Blake said this a couple weeks ago: the toxicity, dog. Yeah. The, the toxicity of this fan base is freaking outrageous. Sometimes, man, it's outrageous. All of y'all arguing on Twitter last night, and some of y'all I love, but some of y'all are arguing with beat writers and stuff. Neither one of y'all is responsible. Some of y'all arguing with Justin Lee. Justin Lee didn't miss no damn blocks last night. And the guy arguing with him, you didn't miss any blocks last night. Everybody on here blaming each other, just fighting because we lost. Come on, man. That, 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 that right there is pathetic. That's just pathetic. And I don't have anything to do with the game, but like it just <laughs> it just made me like, all right, man. Like y'all, y'all will see me on Twitter down the line. But I I, I can't anymore because the stupidity of it has gone, it's just gotten so ridiculous, dog. We got to be better. Um, we got to be better as a fan base. We got to be better as uh, a coaching staff. We got to be better as an administration. We got to be better as players. Uh, th th this loss yesterday is on everybody. It's on everybody. It's on me for not going to the game. It's on me. I, I look at. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm I'm one of those fans who I say, hey, I'm I'm not going to Auburn, New Mexico State. All right. I'm one of those fans, hey, Auburn LSU, I'll be there. All right. Auburn, Texas AM, I'll be there. Auburn, Georgia, I'll be there. But Auburn, New Mexico State, you, you should you should handle New Mexico State, dog. Like I'm not I'm not driving from Mobile to Auburn. That's just how I am, you know, like like I want to I want to get up to the good ones, you know. And for me to sit here and say, and we just got bounced thirty-one to ten by New Mexico State. Maybe I should have been there. It hurts, man. It hurts. Like uh, I got to be better as a fan, as as a, as a guy who uh, you know gets on here and talks about Auburn sports with you and and uh, with the War Report Network. I got to be better. Um, it. It really, really stung yesterday to to just watch what happened, man. And it's hard to get on here and talk about it, y'all. It's hard to get on here. People say, well, you know, how, how do you dissect this game? Well, I can tell you how you dissect it. Uh, like Dustin said, we were terrible on third down. <laughs> uh, couldn't get off the field. We couldn't tackle yesterday. Our D-line and linebackers, we're atrocious. I'm going to look up time of possession real quick while you're going. Yeah. Uh, that was their whole game plan, brother. Yeah. Um, Larry Nixon, the third, with the, with the PI on third down, uh, just we couldn't get off the field. We couldn't get off the field. And uh, and then we go over to the offensive side, and Hugh, Hugh said it. Our wide receivers <laughs> looked like they were running in sand. All right. Um. I said it earlier, Jarquez, Jarquez only getting eight touches is a fireable offense, all right? Philip Montgomery, whatever's going on there, I don't know, all right? I, I do not know. But for 27 to only get eight touches, I think Philip Montgomery is done at Auburn. I think it's over. Um, I, I just – I don't see any way you can keep that around where 
eight touch. I mean, we were on the pregame saying that he wouldn't be playing in the third quarter. <laughs> you know, hey. because I just I thought that yeah. you would let twenty seven eat, and once again, Jeremiah Cobb, nothing to be seen, no screen game, uh, nothing, man. And then people are sitting there, oh, that's all Peyton Thorne wants to do is run. Well, first off, <laughs> like you well, said. Well, he didn't we, have time to throw it. We, we run RPO, all right? Yeah, he, yeah. he made a read, all right? And then by the time – he didn't have time. Like, by the time he makes his read, he didn't have time because our offensive line was getting abused, abused by New Mexico State. I, I, don't, I don't know. Look, I can, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. New Mexico State come in with a game plan and they believed their head coach and they made a statement before kickoff when they run down to Auburn's end zone in their tunnel and they were talking trash, that right there, they said, hey, we can win this game. And then they come out the first drive of the game and they walk it right down your throat. Hmm. And you don't have an answer. You come out your first drive, penalty, penalty. Looks absolutely terrible. Offensive line getting blown off the ball. Uh, punt. Couldn't Look, once you let a team like New Mexico State hang around for three quarters, you're dead, bro. You're dead. Yep. You're dead. Look, go back to my, <laughs> my perfect – my perfect example to this is uh, in 2007, Michigan was the fifth-ranked team in the nation. Appalachian State walked in, Amani Edwards, quarterback, FCS, and Michigan kept letting them hang around, hang around, hang around. And then what did Michigan try to do at the end of the game, Dustin? They threw a bomb. They caught it. They run down there. They try to kick a field goal, and App State blocks it and wins the game. All right? Because when you let a team hang around that is of lesser talent than you, you end up losing that game. Because the more it goes on, the more they think they can win. And that's what happened. And Auburn's just not a good enough team to turn it on all of a sudden. And this program is not a good enough program. And again, I'm guilty of it because of the way I talked on the Friday episode. But we're not a good enough program to just sit here and say, it's New Mexico State, we're going to blow them out. And I'm mad at myself for thinking that all week because we've been saying you got to celebrate every win because they're really hard for this program to get. And, you know, and that's kind of for the people that are uh, to the people that are like just freaking out and doing the whole I told you so, you know, with Hugh Freeze thing. Uh, what, 11 games in it's uh, again, this could be this could be something right. This could be nothing. But. Yeah. To, to, to sit there and circle it right now and say, okay, I told you this isn't going to work. Yeah. Well, nah. that's just looking at their personal, his personal life. Right. <laughs> yeah. It usually, it, it usually is. Uh, yeah. It usually is. But so, but it's hard, man. There's really no other way to, to spin that one. I want to read the box scores really quick. And then it just kind of tells you to tell total yards, New Mexico State, 414 to Auburn's 213. 201 passing yards to R148. Blake, I hope you got Levi put up, brother. Don't let him hear this. Rushing yards, 213 to 65. Yards per play, 6.4 for New Mexico State, 4.7 for Auburn. 23 first downs to R12. Third downs, 6 for 12 for New Mexico State. Absolutely pathetic and ridiculous in your home building, probably because nobody in the crowd would stand up and cheer. And then third down efficiency is uh, we were 2 for 10. 2 for 10 we were. And then penalties, nine, uh, 9 yards and for 75 for both teams. Time of possession, Blake, three, okay. uh, 38 minutes and 50 seconds for you, or New Mexico State to our 21-10. 38-50 to 21-10. New Mexico State said all week we're going to come in there. The game plan that we had that we wanted to do versus LSU and Mississippi and Ole Miss, that's what they did to us. What we had in our head doing to them, I, what, we had two possessions, correct me if I'm wrong, two possessions in the first half, right? Because I remember 
I'm getting absolutely destroyed on the internet right now. And this one I should because it was my girlfriend's first game and then Auburn has one of their worst. That's just internet gold, right? If you've seen that tweet, you just know that's internet gold. I've, I've, I've just accepted that one and y'all could dunk on me there. Uh, it is what it is. But she looked at me and she was like, did we even – we only had the ball, what, once? I said, oh, we had it twice. You might have missed that three and out right there. So, yeah, they definitely – um. It was their game plan, man, to come in and do exactly what they did. And that's the part that frustrates the hell out of me is that I know on Tuesday that they were like, hey, let's control this clock and do this to Auburn. And it's exactly what they did. And I want to touch on the nine penalties for 75 yards. Absolutely pathetic. Ridiculous. Unacceptable. Undisciplined. It falls on the players. It falls on the coaches. I mean, I mean, just the the – how are you getting multiple pre-snap penalties in your home stadium? And it's not loud in there, I promise. I could have yelled at you across the end zones. You'd have heard me. If y'all can't tell, I'm pissed off at the, the lack of juice that was brought at that stadium yesterday. Pathetic. And um, they just – it was just never there, Blake. It was just, it was just never there. I, I'm really struggling on this one, dude, because there's not a whole lot to say. This could be a five minute podcast. They showed up. They knew what they were going to do. They whooped our ass in every single face. They blew us off the line. Their DBs locked our receivers down. We decided to not go to the up tempo all of a sudden. Don't know where that came from. I'm not, and I'm not saying Hugh Freeze is Gus Malzahn. I'm just saying that was a Gus Malzahn special. Just, hey, we're not going to do it today. Because I watched. There were some first downs that we had success on first downs. We didn't really go to it. I can point them out. Like, it just wasn't – I don't know what the deal was, man. I think that the whole program, everybody got caught looking ahead, and we're not a program that can get caught looking ahead. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just my my overall, man, on, on what it means – um, it 100% falls on the coaching staff. It's your job to make sure when you have a clearly more talented team to do better. And I'm talking about people that I love, right? I said the coaching staff. I love me some Zach Etheridge. Your DBs got worked yesterday, brother. Your DBs got worked. How many times have I sang Ron Roberts praises this season? Every episode? Yep. We got schooled yesterday. Schooled, like bad, bad, bad. On Tuesday, you got schooled. I'm going to do this to your defense. I'm going to do it. Where was one time we had them pinned back? We've got their running back five yards on the sideline behind the backfield. Homie turns around and goes up the other way for a first down. Yep. We're playing football. And we never woke up. And the stadium never woke up. The coaches didn't make the adjustments. Cadillac Williams, love them to death. Running backs play like doo-doo yesterday. Everybody. Everybody. There's no excuses. It's inexcusable. My hope is that Blake is correct and that the guys like Cam Coleman are – because, look, I'll say this on the whole uh, recruiting of when people are like, oh, Cam saw this. Maybe. Every kid's different. Like, there are kids that are now leaving Florida, and I think that Billy Napier – is still going to be Florida's coach next year. But they're seeing that, okay, Florida's not trending in the right direction. There's also some blue chip prospects that Auburn would love to have that are going to stay committed to Florida until Billy Napier is actually fired. So I don't know. I don't know Cam Coleman personally, right? I don't know if he was sitting – I can tell you he was standing beside Hugh (laughs) before the game started. Um, I, he got VIP access. He knows how important he is. I don't know. Is Cam Coleman sitting there going, okay, I'm coming in here day one. I'm starting. I can make the difference. Or is Cam Coleman sitting there saying, do I want to go play for a coach who can't beat New Mexico state when he clearly has more talent? Cause make no mistake about yesterday. There was no talent gap yesterday. Auburn was the better team period. Got out coach, got out played period. But I don't know for I think I think it varies by recruit. I think some recruits might be turned off by that. And then I think there's others that might say, Hey, I know Auburn's gonna suck this year. I'm not on the team. Maybe KJ Bolton doesn't care. Maybe Cam doesn't care because they feel like when I get to Auburn, that won't happen. Maybe they do. I think that probably varies 
by you know by recruit by parent because that's the thing too man uh, these kids are still 16 17 their parents are making these decisions a lot of times sometimes you got to win over the mom sometimes you got to win over the dad you know i think it just i think in recruiting i just think every situation varies i think it's a very there's a lot of this is why i'm taking my social media break because there was a lot of just broad stroke painting black and white that goes on with auburn oh we lost Nope, that's it. It's over. Who's not the guy? And then there's the other side that says, everything's going to be fine, guys. There's nothing to worry about. Don't be mad that we just lost by, to Mexico State at home. Don't be mad. It's either one or the other. And it just gets ridiculous. And it gets that way with recruiting, too. It just, it's, just, it's just too much, man. Everything's not black and white. Everything's not this way or that way. These, some of these kids, it might affect them. Some of them, it might not. Cam Coleman might have silently committed to Auburn yesterday for all the hell we know. Yeah. You know, like the smoke, but it, it, maybe, maybe he got turned off midway through the third quarter. We'll find out here December 20th when signing day comes around. But um, the toxicity, man, the infighting, the acting like you know more than this person, this opinion is dead right, this opinion is dead wrong. You don't know, man. In 20 years, Hugh Freeze might have a statue out there. He also might not make it to the year 2025. Let's yeah. all quit acting like, you know what I mean? That that, 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 you're, that because you're in one camp or you're in the other camp, that you just got it all figured out. That right there, I really think that our fan base has got to stop doing that, man. It just, it just uh it doesn't get it doesn't get the family anywhere, bro. It doesn't it, it doesn't get you anywhere. Um as far as the team goes, Blake, like the nine penalties shows me. That you like, you just you weren't ready. You weren't ready. You were under, and you, and you didn't get it right. Like that's what got me was like you were really penalized in the first half, and then you came out in the second half, and you and you didn't get penalized. But I, I, I and you continued to get penalized. I do want to say this: Auburn did not lose the game because of the officials. No, we got our asses drilled point blank. Period. Yep. Okay, now. Vore got tackled. Vore got tackled yeah. on a deep pass. Tackled. That's pass interference. If you tackle the player before he catches the ball, that's pass interference. You've got two referees standing there. Neither one of them can make the call. Can't make it make sense. The body slamming a Pritchard. Bush League. Bullshit. The guy in front of me was like, oh, it's just football. No, it's not. No, it's not. That was Bush League. Should have been a penalty. Um... There was the fumble. It's 17 to 7. They're on the goal line. Again, Auburn should never be in this position. Okay. So this is all on us for even being in this spot. Why are you blowing the why are you blowing the whistle? No one we didn't hear it. I didn't know till till uh somebody texted me they're saying that it's because they stopped the play because they blew the whistle. Because all we see is the replay. And we're like, yo, that's a fumble. Uh, nine penalties on both teams. You called eight penalties in total. Nobody showed up to watch y'all officiate that game. But every big play, they decided. We had another first down. We had uh, There was a first down where we, were, where we were backed up. We get the first down on the third down. They throw a holding flag. The guy from the opposite side of the field throws a holding flag after the chain guys are moving the chains for the first down. Pathetic officiating yesterday. Those guys suck ass. And it's about at the point, it's about at the point to where um after that fumble, if I was you, I would round I would have I'd have rounded up the boys. But let's go, man. Let's go. Because why am I out here? What am I out here doing? That's a fumble. If that ain't a fumble and you're just gonna let them score, then we can just all get this over with. Y'all win 17 to 7. That was that I dog. Then they score, and that's ball game. Again, we shouldn't be in that situation. But if you don't call that, it's our ball at the least. If not, mm. you know, like that. Extremely poor officiating all night. They never let the football happen. No matter what, for both teams, they continue to just throw flags. Uh, just a very, a very frustrating night. I know, guys, this is a very frustrating episode. We didn't have any structure. We just got on here and kind of rambled. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, l- last thing I'll say before we before we 
get out of here. Um, Auburn had three possessions in the first half. All right. And I, and this is my this is where we lost the football game, in my opinion. All right. First possession, three plays, eight yards. Second possession, six plays, 17 yards. Third possession, 11 plays, 81 yards with a touchdown to tie the game at seven. All right. This is where we lost the game, Dustin. New Mexico State gets the ball back with six minutes and two seconds left. Mm -hmm. They are third and eight on their own 27. Diego Pavia, Pavia, however you say his name, pass complete to Eli Stowers for 20 yards to the New Mexico State 47-yard line. So six of 12 on third downs. That's where you lost the football game. All right, you let New Mexico State – Walk down the field right before half, kick a field goal. Uh, and I don't even count Auburn getting the ball uh, two plays for four yards with 26. Yeah. That's not a possession. All right. Um, so you got the ball three times, and the rest is history. So it is what it is, man. That's an L. That's how it goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Book your tickets to Birmingham, boys. Book your tickets to Birmingham. We have some hopes of maybe some Gator Bowl action for Georgia Tech or something like that. And hey, look, we still got to play the game next week. Um, now you're going to get a 10 and 2 SMU team. So. Yeah, and you're going to finish six and seven if that happens. <laughs> like, I'm so, oh man, uh, I'm so tired of it. Was funny too, man, on that, on that, uh, so many people were like, man, I bet your girlfriend's never going to come back to a game now. Do you think that I pipe my girlfriend full of full of bull crap? Do you think she don't hear me every day talk about Auburn? Like, I mean, come on, bro. Like, come on. You think you think that you think that I was walking her around the stadium selling her? Oh, this is the Bo Jackson statue. <laughs> and today, the spirit of Bo Jackson will rise up from the 50-yard line of Jordan Hare. And this here is Cam Newton. And over here is a statue of Shug Jordan. And when we get down to New Mexico State, Shug Jordan's gonna come up and he's gonna whip. Hell no. I watch every single Auburn game. I told y'all after the Baylor basketball game the other night. Remember what I tried to tell y'all when we were getting clapped in Baton Rouge? I can't wait for basketball season. <laughs> really? Really? And who are you a fan of? Mm -hmm. You don't know Hart? Are you new here? No, my girlfriend will come back with me to more Auburn games and we'll see more else. And I told y'all after the old... I was told y'all after the Ole Miss game, I'm never taking my ass up back to Jordan Hare Stadium and paying all that money for gas and seats and hotel and buying merchandise. I told y'all all that 30 days ago. And guess what I just did? I drove my ass right back up to Jordan Hare Stadium. I spent hundreds of dollars on merchandise, hundreds of dollars on hotels, gas, and food. And guess what I'll do next year when we kick that thing off open in week? I'll drive my ass right back up with Jordan here today and do it over and over and over again. I'll catch some basketball L's this year too, baby. So, mm -hmm. nah, it's part of it. Look, man, um, it really sucks. Auburn has lost at least four games dating all the way back to 2014. I'm not sure when we're going to get out of this. Uh, going into the season, I, I going into the season, I still thought we were going to lose four plus games, but I felt really confident in saying those days are coming to an end. I hope they are. They might be. I'm hopeful that they are. I don't know. All I can tell you guys is that regardless, um, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be saying war damn eagle. Uh, I'm hurting today, guys. I'm hurting. And I know that y'all are too. And it's like I said, it's funny because I said, I said, please don't nobody shoot off. The, it's just a game. And then people, here's, here, here's a grown man letting his mood get affected by the game. Well, I'm not, I'm not about to go in there and, and, and beat my dog, you know. Oh, we're gonna be okay. I'm still gonna go to work. I'm still gonna laugh, smile, and everything's everything's gonna be all right. But damn it, I'm a fan, and it hurts. Yep, it, it hurts really bad. And that was the most embarrassed I've ever been in that stadium. So I hope that that team is hurt. I hope that that team, uh. We'll try to come out next Saturday, man, and redeem themselves in, in some sort of fashion. So, but we will be back next Tuesday, live show, 7 p.m. And uh 
it'll be a little bit happier, I hope. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll come up with some ways, Blake, to tell you how Auburn might be able to conjure up the upset next weekend. I don't know. <laughs> My. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man. Uh, we, we appreciate all y'all for watching. We appreciate everybody subscribing. I know that uh, when you clicked play on this one, you were like, you probably hesitated. And I feel you. Because who wants to listen to 45 minutes of whatever the world that you just watched? So for everybody that did, man, I really do appreciate you more than a word of words can express. And listen. This is all just sports, right? Like I said, I take it personal. You know, I take, I don't say I take it personal, but it does hurt me. My, my heart is orange and blue, I promise. Uh, it's hard for me to just go, oh, whoa, 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 and shake off a loss. But, uh, guys, some of this attacking and all this on these different social media platforms and these personal fights and stuff. I probably said it 10 times this episode because I'm getting, I'm getting, and not at everybody, everybody fighting with everybody. I'm tired of it, okay? Auburn, we're going to lose, guys. We're going to lose games. There's no reason for the whole fan base to go to war. That's kind of my final thoughts, Blake. Can we all just be people here? Can we all just can we all just be okay? And 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 when you're when you're losing an argument, you got somebody out there in Mobile that keeps coming at me every post I make, Blake. I'm gonna have to get his name to you. Um, when you're losing an argument, stop. You when when you're losing and you start getting really personal and you start trying to talk about how people look or how. This when you start going that route, you're losing the sports argument, uh, and you're and you're and you're and you're also, um, you also you look really really immature when you're like 45 years old, and then you're like, oh, you know, look at your nose or whatever it is, look at your ears or nice hair, whatever it is, right? Um, you look really dumb doing that as a grown adult doing that on Twitter. Like you look insanely stupid doing that. So um, I'm tired of when Auburn loses in sports, knowing who's going to fight with who and what they're going to fight about. That's that's really, really old, guys. It, it really is. So uh, let's let's try not to do that. But the people that watch us, I love y'all, man. Y'all are super supportive. Y'all are super positive. Uh, War Damn Eagle, Tuesday night Central Time. Blake, you got anything else before we get out of here? War Damn Eagle, keep your heads up. Uh, hopefully better days are ahead. This was a tough one to do. Um, I, that's all I can say, man. Uh, <laughs> somehow, somehow we're only like 14 and a half point dogs against Alabama. So, I, uh, I, it hey, is what it is, I guess. I got so. to tell the story real quick. So, um, so I'm walking into the gas station last night, and old boy's walking in, and he's got New Mexico State gear from head to toe. Now, this is 20 minutes after the game. So my natural reaction is to just give him the shittiest look that a human could ever give another human because I just wasn't ready for it. And so he could, I didn't say a word, wasn't mean, wasn't rude, but apparently my look could have killed because as soon as he walks past, he tells his wife, oh, I think I might need to take my shirt off. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what kind of look I shot him. I know, I know that at 5'10", a buck 65, I'm not intimidating. So yeah. what? So what? So whatever. And then uh, this morning, I'm walking out of the hotel. We we stayed in shorter. We're, uh, going out of the hotel, going to the car, and uh, New Mexico State guy was coming down, and uh, he had you know had all the stuff on. And I said, "Hey man, you know y'all got a hell of a team. Congratulations, got won that uh, that conference title. A uh, big win for you guys last night." And um, he was like, "Oh, huh. oh, well, thank you." I've heard so much about the SEC. I was kind of worried when I saw you coming around the corner. Appreciate it. Bubba, I ain't going to – y'all kicked our ass. Ain't nothing for me to say. Hey, yeah. safe, safe travels back to New Mexico, came in our trap, took over our trap. Mm. Mm. They did do that, Dustin. They did do that. I Look, all I can say now is uh, win a bowl game. Win your bowl game. Do not finish six and seven because I don't see us winning next Saturday. Um, all the hope and fire that I had for that is gone. <laughs> so, but, war hey, damn eagle. Behind the scenes, I promise y'all, Blake was going to bug next week and predict a big Auburn win. <laughs> I was. I was going to bug, man. I was going to bug. But now it's gone. Uh, war damn eagle. And I'm out for this one. Yes, sir. We'll see y'all Central Time, 7 p.m. Tuesday night. Later, y'all.